Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, before we start tonight, I need to explain something because I've had quite a few comments about it. I know that you can hear a faint clicking when I do the accounts. Um, and unfortunately, I'm disabled. I have to use my voice to type. And the new voice app that I have, unfortunately, makes a typing sound when I'm talking. I am looking for another app to fix the problem. Um, and hopefully it won't take me long to do that. But until now, I'm so behind with the sightings that I need to do it with the, the apparatus that I've got. Um, the account that I'm bringing to you tonight was given to me back in August of last year. That's how far behind I am. So it's kind of a juggling act. People want to hear the accounts and unfortunately... I cannot type them, those days have gone, and I'd have to do it three times over if I didn't use the voice app. So um, we're just going to have to put up with it for now. Um, and if I lose a few subs, I'll lose a few subs. There's not much I can do. So let's get back to the matter in hand. Gone fishing, angler hears strange footsteps around his tent. Now, as many as you know, when I was a lass, I would often go fishing with my dad. And he was a keen angler and he taught me how to fish from a very early age. Let me just stick this up down there. I'm getting in the way. Now, I was usually in the woods playing back then. And I could sort out a roach pole or a rod pretty quickly. And sneakily, I would leave the rod set up with a bell so I could play and still hear if I got a bite. Now, tackle and bait takes me right back to my childhood. And many of my dad's generation and the younger generation of mine also. Still fish at weekends or do a cheeky bit of night fishing and a camp out. One of the places I would go as a kid to fish was Clifton Country Park along the River Irwell route. Now there's a large water body there called Clifton Marina uh, and it's fished most days by the local anglers and you'll see a picture of it a little bit as I scroll down. Now the lake is set in Clifton Country Deer Park which is a nature reserve in the northwest of England and even now it's a wonderful place to fish or hike. I still visit most weeks and I sit and watch the horses. It's a lovely area to collect your thoughts or just to let the kids run up a bit of steam. And back in the air, 80s, it was much more rural than it is today. So this account was taken by me. And it's from a gentleman that fished on this marina all through the 80s and 90s and probably still does, I think. Um, and this is the area that we're talking about here. Now, in 1988, I got my first car. And that was the start of the summer of many nights spent fishing with a couple of my mates from down our street. One Saturday night in late July, we decided to go and fish at Clifton Marina. And that's off the A666 between Kersley and Swinton. Yeah, there actually is a road called the A666 where I live. Now, we got there about 8pm and we decided to set up at the bottom end of the lake where the river Irwell winds around the back and heads off towards Stone Club and Ringley Woods. Now, when we arrived, it was a warm, still night, without a ripple on the surface, and it looked like we had to place to ourselves. There was no sign of any other gear set up. The pegs were empty, and there was nobody else came around as we fished. Now, the three of us fished about 15 to 20 feet apart from each other, and as each peg spot was separated by reeds and bushes, so we couldn't actually see each other apart from the ends of our rods sticking out. Now, I was sat at one end of the marina, so there wasn't anyone fishing to my right side. And once darkness fell, so the night was pitch black. Only our torches and headlights were visible. But because they attracted midges and all manner of flying bugs, we didn't leave them on for very long. Now, I had a baby type over ramp that fitted up my fishing umbrella. And after an uneventful night, I fell asleep. And I was woken to the sound of gravel shuffling from directly behind my bivet. Almost like someone was shifting their weight from one foot to another. This happened over and over. And after a couple of minutes, it stopped and all went quiet. And I thought it was one of my mates who had climbed out of his baby silently and was just stood there having a bag stretching his legs. So I got up to look and I peered around the back, but there was no one there. It was just starting to come light and it must have been about 4am. And I was still tired and I dropped back off to sleep again until the sun came up. Later, I went to see my mates and see how they'd got on and if they'd caught, a, and they'd caught quite a few fish. I asked if one of them had been for a walk behind my peg in the night, but they both said they hadn't been out of the tent or moved at all in the night. 
I always thought it weird that if it was them, why didn't they just speak or just ask if I'd caught anything? For all those years, I didn't believe them and I just thought it was one of them messing about. But now, I think differently. It was only when a re recent account came into BBR from a guy who was fishing a pond at night in Epping Forest when he was a kid that I started to rethink that night. Now, the account from Epping jogged my memory and it made me wonder and look at that night with a different perspective, especially as the area I was fishing is right on the River Irwell route and that's had numerous sightings of a Bigfoot-type creature going back to the 1970s. Although this subject was not something I was tuned into at the time, it was only years later, and I now wonder who walked behind my peg that night. Um, and that account was reported to me um, personally. Now, Ricketts Mayor Malden is a tent encounter of 1997. A lot of the witness reports that come in, come in from wild campers, um, poachers, people out fishing, fishermen, anglers, all kind of people who are used to being outside. They are used to the usual noise that being on the lake or being in the woods, the animal noises and the strange sounds, and sound carries quite far when you're, you're near water. They are used to all that. So what they're saying is they're taking all that into account and these accounts are still very strange to them. And this gentleman's an ideal example of that. I'm into my fishing and I always have been. And a few years back, I'd spent a night fishing at Ricketts May. Now, I fish a lot of nights, and I'm mostly on my own when I do, and I'm not afraid of the dark, and I've spent most of my life out and about in the countryside fishing. I've also spent many nights in the woods camping and rabbiting on fort after dark, etc. So to be alone in the dark is not a problem for me. I actually feel more scared walking down the local high street at night than out in the woods and fields. So when I explain what happened, you need to know I don't spook easily. I'm used to the noises of the night, whether it's in the woods or out on the lake. So I'd done fishing for the night and I'd not had any problems at all. It was all quiet. In fact, it was too quiet. I would not had any takes either. So I wrapped up in the sleeping bag and just waited on the float bobbin. When, now I'm not sure if I was awake or I had nodded off or was daydreaming at this point. But I heard something walking around in the grass behind my biver. So I stayed still, just peeping out of my bag and straining to hear what it was. It was just before dawn, around 5am, when I swear that a dark shape of a person walked right past the front of my oval brolly. I sat up, quick smart, and grabbed the hammer. I keep the hammer under my bed chair and I jumped out shouting. I was ready to have a row with whoever was snooping around me rods. I knew nobody else was on the lake and there are no houses or any other reason for anyone to be there except to fish. So to my amazement, I'm belting the torch into the swim and shouting, nothing, just my rods and swingers on the floor where I left them. I even got the two um, candlelight out and swept the meadow. I was fishing from a nothing. Now that scared the out of me. Maybe it doesn't sound that bad to you, but it certainly made me think about doing nights on my own again. The Beast of Bollum Lake, Northumberland, 2003. This is the area that the encounter happened in. A strange creature with glowing eyes was reported by a fisherman in 2003. The man who made the report was with friends when the incident happened. They all tell of many hours spent fishing in Bollum Lake near Belsey in Northumberland, and the men would fish for pike late at night, but their tranquility was disturbed on one fishing trip by a catch they did not expect to make. And the witness making the report is called Neil, and he tells how he was between his friend, also called Neil, and Nathan as they were walking on a wooded path back to the car park just after midnight, and as I say, it's this path here. Now, about halfway along the path, Neil turned around to talk to Nathan, who was the last in line, and further back along the back path, picking his bag up off the track. Now, Neil states, behind him, standing at the side of the wooden track, was a dark figure that he could see clearly due to the moonlight shining through the trees. 
The others did not see it at first and Neil had to point it out to them until they too could see the figure he had noticed. He said it was dark, it was a dark figure. It looked to be about eight feet tall and was heavily built. Its eyes, or what seemed to be its eyes, glowed in the darkness. We ran at top speed all the way back to the car. We were scared out of our wits. His friend Neil also reported seeing the figure when he was alone one night on the hill close to the remains of an old Iron Age settlement by the park boundary. Now he described the creature as dark brown in colour with huge muscular arms. The witness, a keen wild camper, went on to add that a few weeks later, while he was camping on the hill, he was awoken about 1am by a loud thud. He heard a growling sound and something rummaging around in his bait box outside the tent. Now, when he checked the camp in the morning, he discovered large rocks had been placed or thrown around the camp and the fish from the bait box had been taken. The Creature of Frensham Great Pond. Now, this report came into uh, Bigfoot Tony, the British Bigfoot research team. Now, I'm making this report on my father's behalf. This encounter happened in the early 1970s and I shall give my best description of what my dad experienced that night. It was quite late, but the area was well lit by the moon. My dad was with his girlfriend at the time, sat in his car by the pond, Lake. I believe this place is called Frensham Great Pond and it's near Farnborough. And it's really quite a remote area, he said. I think it's a little bit bigger than a pond. I mean, I have to add, I know the area. It's quite a large lake. Anyway, as the night unfolds, there was him and his girlfriend and another car parked nearby them. They were sat chatting, facing each other. And dad said to his girlfriend, dad said his girlfriend, sorry, suddenly looked in shock as she saw this thing go past the back window. Then suddenly the man in the car nearby got out and said to my dad and his girlfriend, something along the lines of, what the hell was that? Did you see it? The man said it jumped on his bonnet, then ran off towards the lake. They went down to the lake to have a look. And that is when my dad could see it. All of them could see it running up the bank or the hill on the other side of the pond. And it was running fast. It must have run right along the bank of this lake to the other side. Now the man described the creature as youngish and totally covered in hair. Red eyes at Welney Fen, 1980s. This is another account that came in through Bigfoot Tony. Now, my dad would like to report an experience he can't explain that happened on his honeymoon some years ago now. Himself and my mum, along with another fisherman, saw glowing red eyes blinking away in the darkness one night. And my dad's quite fearless with stuff like this, so without hesitating, he went over to see what it was in the dark. And he followed the eyes for a good 45 minutes, and they were always keeping the same distance from my dad as he walked, the distance between him and the eyes never closed. He then decided enough was enough and he ran at it in a bid to outrun it and get a much closer look, but he couldn't catch it. This was in the 1980s at a place in the fence called Wellner. Now my dad says most people set the mic up, saying he was drunk. He's never drank and he's old school London, so he'll only say what he saw. Nairn Net Raider, September 2015. This is the area we're talking about. Close to the battlefield of Clodden, there is an area used quite often for fishing by the locals and the odd poacher. And a male from the area, who was out in the fields late at night and early in the morning, had a strange story to report to a member of the VBR team. Now, the gentleman stated he'd seen something about three to four times now down in the area where he fishes. The first time, he was out in the fields covertly and was laying low, keeping out of sight of any landowners or groundsmen, when he heard someone approaching his hiding spot. And whoever it was, they were coming along the riverbank in his direction, so he dived for cover and he stayed hidden. And as it passed him by, the thing appeared to be enormous, both in height and width, and stank to high heaven. His best view of the creature was one night he had his nets out on the river and he walked away downstream. 
presumably to scare the fish towards the net, although he didn't specify that. When he came back about half an hour later to check for his catch, he stated, the bloody great hairy thing was taking the fish from my net. He yelled at it and it stood up and it turned complete with fish and walked off into the trees, completely ignoring the annoyed fisherman. It wasn't in any hurry, he said. Now our researcher asked the witness for a general description and he said the height on this thing was really tall and he estimated it on his own height as he himself is six foot three. So he thinks the thing was around seven feet tall, much taller and broader than him. He has also seen the creature on other occasions on the opposite bank of the river, but it always kept a distance of at least 30 feet away from the bank and it would try to hide in the tree line or the brush. He also mentioned in passing that his brother had seen the same figure across the battlefield at Culloden. And that report was taken by MC, uh, a member of the British Bigfoot research team. Now, whistles and stones thrown at Loch Lomond, 2017. I would like to report something that happened to me and a friend when we were fishing the Loch in 2017. We were two fishermen from Scotland and we were fishing for pike in a small Loch in within the Loch Lomond National Park. And it's something we both enjoy doing. And we're outdoor whenever we can get out or have free time. And we fished all over this area and many others. And we're used to the usual noises out there. Sounds change due to the lay of the land and the body of water. But what happened that day is just unexplainable. This all happened at roughly 10.15pm. It was autumn, so around October. And we'd been there a while and the weather was pretty cold. We'd fished for most of the evening. And around 10pm we decided to call it a day. We stopped our fishing and we both returned to the car together to pack all of our things away. I hadn't mentioned to Richard that most of the time we were out there that evening, I felt uneasy and I couldn't settle. As a very real feeling something was watching us. I packed away quickly as by the time I was getting quite cold and hungry and we both ready for something to eat, packing my tackle into the car, I heard a loud whistle only about 50 metres away. This startled me, as I said beforehand, I was feeling quite nervous and anxious to get away quickly. I fished this area many times, and I've never felt like this before. So I was really on edge when I heard that whistle. It was pitch dark, and I looked around in the general area I heard it from. But it was so dark, I didn't see anything, or make anything, or anyone out clearly. I would have put this down to an animal, or a bird to be honest. But near enough immediately after the whistle, I had a medium sized rock thrown at my car. Now luckily it didn't hit it, or it would have caused a great deal of damage and it landed with a thud and we couldn't make out where the rock had been thrown from or by whom. I hurried into the car and took off and just got out of there. Now this area is permitted on my permit, so it wasn't as if we were poaching or illegally fishing. So I couldn't think why anyone would be throwing a rock at me in a cold night in the dark, in the middle of nowhere. As the houses are too far away to it have been a dog walker, or we would have seen them on the day track, or at least we would have heard them walking along the gravel. And I'm certain we were the only ones around the lock in that night. Now, I still fish the area from time to time, but we just don't fish anywhere near sundown anymore, as we both were shaken up by the experience. And Richard's ex-army, but it spooks him too. And we're both on edge at dark after what happened that night. Something I would like to add is a weird conversation I had when I worked at the Glasgow Angling Centre Fishing Megastore. I was chatting to a regular customer James MacDonald, who was in the Royal Marines some years ago now. And we were talking about our kayak fishing on the National Park. And he said that his friend had seen two bears standing up on one of the islands. Now, I've kayaked to the islands, nearly all of them, in fact, and one in particular at Balmaha has a large population of wallabies and striking marked fallow deer. 
Now that report was taken by me. Now many of the reports above were taken by members of the British Bigfoot team. And if you would like to join our In The Field team, or just become a member to show your support, you can get your memberships by contacting me or by clicking on the link below. Um, you don't have to do anything if you're a member. It's just a way of showing support. And it's you, what happens is you get, you, if you want to, it's entirely up to you. We can put you on a member's map if you want to meet up with other people across the country and chat online or meet up and go out. There's also a monthly newsletter that goes out with any evidence find or sighting reports that come in. Um, and you will get early access to... Um, everything that I do really of being part of the team and it also enables you to chat and talk with other members of the research team that have been at this years and years and years now there's more than just me and Bigfoot Tony and Chris Turner and Stu Hill there's hundreds of us now across the country and what we're trying to do is get people together and get them networking and just even if it's just chatting about ideas nothing more than that um but if you want to volunteer for when a sighting account comes in, if you could go out to that area and take a few photographs for us and give us a little bit of a bio about the area and what it looks like to you, that would be extremely welcome. Or if you fancy being a member and looking for reports on lines in the Paranormal Forum, the Wild Campy Forums, anything that you can think of um, would be entirely welcome. Because as we say, four eyes are better than two and a thousand eyes are better than a hundred. So I'm hoping over time that we can have members in every county and I hope that I'll meet all of you. And as I said before, Clifton Country Park, the very first report that I spoke to you about is very dear to my heart. And unfortunately, I was there this weekend um, and I wanted to take some photographs of the area to show to you all. And as I was getting out of the car and was transferring to the, weekend, the wheelchair, down I went and I've twisted me good ankle. Um, so it's all strapped up and I'm back on the pain pills unfortunately I'm okay, it's just a small twist and I think I've just done something to the ligaments but considering it's my good leg it means I can't really get about um, so we'll just have to see I'm going to see how it goes over the next fortnight and uh, hopefully over the summer I'll be out to meet some of you or all of you um, and that's what I'm hoping for anyway so to wrap this up, as I said earlier, I'm really sorry about the tapping. I'm going to do everything I can do, I can do to uh, get rid of it, and I will redo the videos that has the tapping noise in. Um, I promised a few people that. I know it's annoying, but unfortunately, it's the only thing I can do at the minute. Um, so that's it. So I will let you all know about a BBR meeting that's coming up online on YouTube in June. Um, and I will send the email out to all of the members. Um, as I say, you go onto a mailing list, so that way you don't miss anything, you don't meet, miss any meets or anything like that. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, whether you're out in the woods or not. And if you are out in the woods, enjoy it. Take the grandkids, take the dog, go with a friend, just go on your own, take a flask, have a brew out there, and just enable, give yourself 10 minutes to breathe and forget about everything else that's going on around you. So until next time, blessings from Lancashire and a very good night from me. Good night, everybody.